Daria, Valeria, Serena, hello. 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 Thank you for being with us today with the Gender for STEM project um, as our role models, or our young role models. What studies are you doing at the moment? Um, I'm Daya Petka from Romania and I am in the 11th grade at the Colegio Nacional Unirea from Târgu Mureș with mathematics and informatics majors. I'm in uh, the high school, in the for of high school. I study computer science in high school, but uh, all the things that I have uh, done, like robotic and coding, I have done all things uh, not in the school, outside school. No, that's good. <laughs> okay. And I'm uh, at high school at the Athenee Luxembourg here in Luxembourg, and I have like general courses as well: history, economics, but sciences and languages. And I also do coding, programming outside of the school in extracurricular activities. Okay. So what is, I wanted to ask you, what is your biggest achievement at the moment? What is the thing you did and that you are the most proud of? Uh, I won a prize uh, for young women in public affairs. And that was really uh, nice and uh, accomplishing personally fulfillment because it was recognizing my engagement in NGOs and politics over years and years. And yeah, my engagement for society and that was really interesting. Uh, my robotic school. Yeah. I have a robotic school in Italy since I was uh, 16. I have this school that teach uh, from uh, children of uh, three years old until uh, teens, uh, adult, uh, but also teacher, company. I started uh, one year ago uh, alone and now I have uh, ten uh, teacher and a uh, company partner and uh, we do workshop around Italy, around Europe, but uh, also in San Francisco and uh, we teach uh, robotics in a creative and uh, fun way. We don't uh, use uh, desk and uh, standard teaching that is boring for children, but we use uh, a fun play, play, play it, it way to teach robotics and uh, so children can uh, learn and uh, they at the same time they can play. And we have uh, 10 uh, rules of our school and uh, the first rule is uh, the most important is uh, that nothing is impossible. And so the children can do what they want and they can't say, I can't do the it, because uh, we think that is uh, only a, a mental block to convince ourselves to give up. And so they can uh, try, try, try again. And so they can do what they want. They can build a robot. They can uh, learn to use a tool and they can do it in the same way. They can uh, follow their passion and do the job that they will like in the future. Um, one of my biggest achievements would be the fact that after years of hard work and devotion, I finally managed to obtain a bronze medal at the National Olympiad of Informatics, which is the most prestigious informatics uh, contest in our uh, country. It's uh, extremely difficult and uh, it was a lot of hard work, especially on my own. I was uh, in a study group made out of only boys. I was the only girl, and that uh, determined me even more to do the work and to prove myself that I can do it. Congratulations, you three. Did you always know you wanted to study STEM, a computer or maths? You, you remember what decided you, what the trigger was, Valeria? I started uh, when I was small, when I was uh, 11. Uh, at the beginning of, of uh, middle school, uh, I like uh, chemistry and uh, computer science. And uh, I live in a small town, Alessandria, in Italy. And uh, there, there was uh, nothing about uh, computer science. So I searched online and I found uh, Coder Dojo, that are uh, a community around the world that help uh, children to learn coding and uh, robotic. I went to the Coder Dojo in uh, Milan and uh, there I discovered that uh, there was coding but also robotic. I saw there a digital plant that uh, was a plant designed on uh, the monitor of a uh, computer mm -hmm. that uh, can interact uh, with uh, other people with uh, Arduino, a small uh, computer board. And uh, I like a lot uh, this plant because it uh, can interact and uh, when there is people is more happy and uh, can change their uh, aspect on uh, the computer. And so when I came back home, I, sta I started to use uh, this board at the beginning a simple way by switch on LED motors. And after following a YouTube tutorial, I created my first robot 
that has a, that is a robot that can avoid obstacle and go alone around a, a small room. And uh, for me, it was uh, really simple things, but uh, I understand that uh, for other, especially for adults, it wasn't. And so I was invited in a lot of uh, different conference events in Italy. And uh, at 13, I became a digital champion to digitalize uh, my city, or at 14, I spoke in a TEDx. And uh, at 15, I arrived in uh, MIT in Boston. I stayed there for uh, three months and uh, the, in the project uh, Ducky Town is a department where there is a city of duck and uh, I have to create a robot that can go alone around uh, this city. It can uh, avoid uh, pedestrian or other vehicles, but also read uh, traffic signal, traffic lights. Uh, it can go do different things and I have to transform the high school, uh, the university tutorial and make it accessible also to high school students. And there I, in uh, MIT, I discovered that uh, you can learn by playing. The learning don't have to be always boring. And so I came back in Italy and I started to do some lessons. And in few time, it uh, became a school. I started alone and now I have a company partner, Francesco, and we do this workshop around Italy and now I have a company. Congrats. What uh, do you remember? Where you find your motivation? I always loved sciences at school, uh, chemistry, biology, physics, maths, and I always was a very curious person and wanted to develop my creativity and trying everything then and there. And yeah, a few years ago there was a, an event, Wales Girls, mm -hmm. who gave the opportunity to young girls in one day to create an app. And I say, wow, fantastic, in one day you can have your own app and do something with it. And I did this workshop, I loved it, and then I continue making my own research on the internet and you can learn by yourself and that's like also super interesting, you're not dependent on a teacher of what he knows, but you can just go on tutorials on YouTube, share with friends also, work all together on a project and learn from each other. You never do mistakes actually because sometimes no one knows the solutions, but you try together and then you fail, you do it again and then you're super happy when you achieve it actually. And yes, that's how I did also summer school on startup, on big data. And then there was the idea of combining uh, different big data. And we were searching for new technologies like smart homes, the, the budget of people. And then I started with my group to create a company called Smart Fridge. To actually, it should be also a social company uh, to share food and not waste it anymore. And you can get recipes about what's still in your fridge and get a recipe for it. Or you're saying, okay, I have a big dinner for my family. What can I do for them and what do I need to buy? Yes, okay. that's how I continue. And you're still developing this uh, Exactly, this app, right? I'm now prototyping it mm -hmm. to, to really create it and, and trying to, with machine learning also, with chips in the fridge, it can recognize what's a tomato, how much uh, milk is left in the bottle okay. to inform you when you should buy new things. What about you, Daria? Um, I uh, started uh, working in this uh, programming field when I was 13 years old. I took some programming courses in my uh, local town mm -hmm. and I enjoyed them so much that I decided that this would be my career path, even though I initially wanted to become a lawyer. <coughs> so uh, ever since then, I started to learn more and more uh, in STEM disciplines and I love them very much and I think that studying them has a lot of positive results besides improve, improving one's critical thinking and imagination they explain to us how our world works and um, also they teach us that the best way to learn something is by being curious determined and uh, ready to spend a lot of time <laughs> searching for answers uh, after that um, I uh, won the bronze medal this year and also uh, I started a robotics club with my physics teacher at our high school uh, in the ninth grade two years ago and um, besides that uh, I won a, a Google Developer Challenge Scholarship and now I'm studying uh, with uh, 1,000 other people in developing Android applications and uh, I think that this experience has made me grow so much as a person and as a programmer, and I am very grateful for interacting with people from so many parts of the world. Cool. 
And so you have your studies, whether you carry them at school or not. You have your own school sometimes. You have political engagements, charity engagements. You already act as role models, creating your clubs. You sometimes sleep or go to the movie. <laughs> what about your leisures? Are they all about programming too? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I love rhythmic gymnastics. I mm. do rhythmic gymnastics since I was three and I teach to small children rhythmic gymnastics. I like uh, to go out with uh, my friend. I like uh, small things like uh, do with paper, like uh, quilling, uh, kirigami, and uh, I have also a um, vegetable uh, garden with uh, where, uh, in my my garden. And okay. Yes, I'm also a member of the Youth Parliament and of the Luxembourg Parliament, where we got also the opportunity to discuss together, to take decisions. Uh, but I'm also dancing, swimming, horse riding, and okay. playing the piano. No, we've got a lot of other leisures okay. who, um, who give us the opportunity actually to have our personal fulfillment in all those domains and to be curious and learn every day and share with other people all around the world. Okay. What about um, you? What do you do in your free time? <laughs> I love to listen to music all the time. I love to read and I love to write as well. I to, uh, took the liberty to write all, all the time. I love to swim, I love to play tennis, and uh, sports in general, because they are very important for our development. Okay. So about dancing, I think uh, you brought us some little robots that yeah. can dance. Yeah, it can would dance. You, so. The dance spots, would you show us? Yes, this is the this is, uh, is a project of uh, the ATH of uh, Zurich, mm -hmm. the Polytechnic of Zurich, and uh, is a robot that uh, children and teens from uh, eight years old they can uh, make this robot. They can uh, from learn from eight years old. Yes. Okay. They can learn uh, to solder with. Uh, they can solder all of this uh, component and chip, and after they can uh, personalize it how they want. Okay. They can do. They can. Do so this doesn't originally come with the kit. No, no, this no. They yours. can. Uh, they can uh, do it how they want. They can, it can become okay. uh, something like a Star Wars character or animal or uh, all what they want or a Pokemon uh, okay. or what they like. <laughs> and uh, with uh, the same cable uh, like earphone and uh, it can uh, with this component transform uh, the, the change of frequency of the music in uh, movement for wheels, in lights uh, and also in a uh, speaker that we listen. Good. The dancing bot. Yeah, <laughs> dance bot. Daria, if you met a girl now like in your club for instance and she doesn't know what she wants to study, she's still hesitating, what would you, what would you Tell her, what piece of advice would um, you give? I always give this piece of advice for people to come to me and ask, look, uh, I don't know what should I do next. And I think that the most important thing a person can do is follow their passion. Because uh, you don't want to end in 14 year, 40 years old in a job that you hate and you become tired and you start to hate on life. And it's not okay. You should try to follow your passion even if at the beginning it may seem impossible. Because you can start by setting small goals and trying to achieve them. But if you fail at achieving them, it's not a problem. If you, at first you don't succeed, try, try again, as the, the English proverb says. Persevere. Yes. Okay. In your passion. What about you? Uh, to teens like me, I, 
I go in uh, high school uh, to, to do motivational speech with uh, guys like me and uh, I always said that to them that uh, nothing is impossible so they can uh, create uh, what they want, they can uh, go around the world, they can uh, meet different uh, people, they can uh, find uh, a passion that uh, not have only, only to be dance or uh, motor or something like this. Like this, they can have a passion that uh, can be different from uh, other teens like them. And uh, they can also uh, follow their uh, passion by writing mail to important person around the world. And uh, they can uh, follow the video like uh, also TEDx. Uh, they can uh, learn in a lot of different ways. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, they have to go always outside their own town and they can have to discover the world and uh, they have uh, to put a lot of passion in uh, what they do and in that way nothing will be impossible. Okay. Serena, yes, I think I will say they should find something they love. They can do for hours and hours in a day, for weeks, for months and nothing is impossible. Whatever your teacher tell you, you're not good enough in that or that, if you work hard everything is, is possible. People did it before and will do it after and I think we are largely capable of doing what we want. There are no limits. The sky is the limit, and I think like everyone should fulfill his dreams. Okay. So, rule number one: nothing is impossible if you follow your passion and hard work. Right. Yeah. Thank you, girls, and really a lot of success in your future projects. But I guess it will. Thank, Thank you very much.